There's an unusual phrase that's found in the Old Testament, and I want to think about it a few minutes today. We read this beautiful statement in Exodus 34. The Lord, the Lord God, merciful and gracious, long-suffering and abounding in goodness and truth, keeping mercy for thousands, forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin. And then there's a shift. And the verse goes on to say, by no means clearing the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children and the children's children to the third and fourth generation. Well, what does this mean? I mean, is somehow a person fated to follow in the footsteps of their father and their grandfather? Well, we know that isn't true. Because when we read, for example, the history of the kings of Judah, good king Hezekiah, he had one of the most wicked sons, Manasseh. And thankfully, at the very end of his days, Manasseh, in captivity in, in a land of the Gentiles, he gets down and repents and turns to the Lord, and the Lord saves him and brings him back in his old age, back to Jerusalem. But it's too late for his son. And his son, we read of, Ammon was a very wicked man. However, the next generation again, we read about good King Josiah. So some of the worst kings had some of the best sons, and some of the best kings had some of the worst sons. There's every permutation. All throughout the scripture, we read these statements that he chose to walk in the ways of his father David, or he followed Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, who caused Israel to sin. The point that's being made in this verse is that we do have a huge impact on not only the next generation, but on the one that follows, on our children and grandchildren. And we see this time and time again, the trail of trickery in the story of Abraham and Isaac, all the way through Jacob and Joseph. There's this trail of trickery and the things that Abraham did in disowning his wife, Isaac did the same thing. So, that's one side of the equation. The other side is that we can be a huge blessing to our children and grandchildren. And we read in Psalm 103, verse 17, the mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting on those who fear him and his righteousness to children's children. So I want to think with you a little bit about this because, you know, sometimes the grace of God offered to every generation skips a generation because that generation rejects him. So, I was telling a story last week about being on the East Coast of the U.S. and meeting a very interesting man and talking about how his life was impacted by an old lady who prayed for him, unknown to him, prayed for him from his childhood through into adulthood and how God brought them together. I want to tell another story that occurred actually in the same town where there was a young woman sitting up near the front and she was just beaming and enjoying every minute of the ministry of the Word of God. And afterwards, she came up to me and she had under her arm a Bible and a padded envelope. And uh, she was just so thankful for the ministry. And I said to her, well, you know, tell me your story. And she said, well, I grew up in this neighborhood, but I never came to this building. My parents were both drunkards. They both ended up dying in drunken stupors. And my husband and I were on the same road. We lived for the weekend, pub crawls. That's what we did. And uh, there was a fellow from this local church who used to talk to me about the Lord at work. I had nothing to do with it. I was not interested until I came home one day from work and I found my husband hanging in the living room. And the first call I made was to the police, and the second call was to this man. And I said, I'm ready to listen. And he poured out to my heart the glorious truth that Jesus was willing to take me as is and change me from the inside out. And I put my trust in Christ. Then I started attending here. Well, I knew nothing about being a Christian, a young lady. Uh, but there was an older lady here who showed kindness to me. And she invited me to come to her little apartment and uh, we'd have a cup of tea and she talked to me about the Lord and about modesty and about being a Christian lady. And one day she said to me, uh, did you grow up in this neighborhood? 
And I said, yes. She said, well, what was your maiden name? When I told her, she gasped. And she said, you know, that little sofa there is soaked with the tears of your grandmother. She was my best friend. And we used to pray for your mother and your father, but they would never respond to the gospel. This young lady said, I didn't even know my grandmother. We were completely cut off from her. I didn't know she was a Christian. And all these years, she'd been praying for her daughter. Prayers upon prayers. But the daughter rejected the grace of God. Well, God said, there's no use wasting all those prayers. I'll just apply them to the next generation. And they all landed on that young lady's head that day. The old lady went into the bedroom and she came back with this little envelope, this padded envelope, and in it was her grandmother's Bible, full of the most beautiful copper plate handwriting notes on almost every page. And there it was, this beautiful heritage, the prayers that had gone up from a broken-hearted mother, praying for a daughter. No answer. But God said, no. I'll not only do it for children, but sometimes if they reject me, I'll apply it to children's children. The mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting on those who fear him and his righteousness to children's children.